1997, a year of revolution for Top of the Pops. 97 was when things got really exciting. It felt like we were going to revolutionise things. Going on Top of the Pops, you know, we wanted to talk to the rest of the world. Everything came, I wouldn't say fast, but when it came, it came like a storm. Europop had become a force to be reckoned with, and us girls were shouting louder than ever before. Of course our songs had to be heard, why not? It was about time that door got smashed down, really. We had to really grab our careers by the horns and go, we're doing this. The rule of Britpop was almost over, and anti-fashion was the season's hottest trend. 1997 was just the most amazing year for music. 97 was when everything started shaking loose. I mean, we did everything super quick because we didn't think that this was for real. 97 completely changed everything in the world of Texas. The world welcomed Generation Z slash Z and change was afoot. It was all so new and it was all so fast. We were just like in a speeding car and along for the ride. 97 was a really important year because all of that juicy stuff that we have now, that was where it all started. And witness to it all was Top of the Pops. This needed to be the best party in the world happening in your living room every Friday night. At the start of 1997, political change was in the air. I'm sinking deep, I'm going under. I believe this election is winnable. Not only do I think it's winnable, I think I'm going to win this election, and so are the Conservative Party. Hmm. Over in the Far East, Hong Kong entered a new chapter outside of British rule. Now, Hong Kong people are to run Hong Kong. Supercomputers were getting ultra-competitive. The computer Deep Blue has tonight triumphed over the world chess champion Garry Kasparov. And in a magical land far away, the Teletubbies had been born. Back here in Blighty, at the Cultural Coliseum of Elstree Studios, Top of the Pops had crashed through to 97 and was officially ready to go. Here, making it there. Top of the Pops debut, we got Republic In 1997, there was definitely a female message coming across, which had to be shouted out because uh, radio and television wouldn't play us or have us on, on the TV. Republica are rare because it's a rock sound, although there are dance elements to it and there are pop elements to it. But with Saffron, you've got this amazing front person. And if anyone could start a band, get a record contract, and take their hit to Top of the Pops, it would be Saffron. In the early 90s, I walked into the offices of Deconstruction Records, which was a small indie label, and I demanded they give me a record deal. I told them I had the greatest band in the world and that we were going to sell millions of records. And I needed them to say yes, and they said, <laughs> Come back in a month and we'll see. So I went to look for a band because the band was in my head. A month later, I turned up with one song, which was eight minutes long, a techno track. And uh, after a minute, I switched it off and I said, have we got a deal? Because I've got a meeting at 2 p.m. with Virgin. And they said, yeah. It had started. Band, check. Record deal, check. Next. Hits. We'd love to have number one hit. Any band that doesn't say they want to be in top four, it's lying, because they have to be, because otherwise you don't get to make another record, do you know what I mean? Once we got the lyrics and the melody to, to ready to go, all of us went, oh, I think we're on to something here. I'm 
mean, that song is absolutely massive. You couldn't get out of the house without hearing that song somewhere. <laughs> I remember getting the call for Top of the Pops and literally a cheer went up in the back of the van because we always used to wait and listen to the chart positions, you know, and we like, literally couldn't believe, just so excited, so excited, you know, it was just like a dream come true. We were so excited because not only were the Spice Girls there, who all came up to me and said they were fans, you know. But Prince was there. He's a bit all-time idol and inspiration. I just remember myself just like drop jaw at, at this extraordinary, you know, just on another level of talent. Just like, wow. Republica. Republica's rock-themed fairy tale continued, and again, it all came from Saffron's imagination. Words, he got up. Shut up. I'm talking. Drop Dead Gorgeous came to me in a dream, and uh, yeah, it literally, it was, it was like automatic writing. I, like, I literally went in the studio, went, this is how it goes, da, 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 da. And, and the boys were like, what? This time, you'll listen. Well, the dream is obviously about ex-boyfriends who lie. But I wanted it to be empowering, you know, it, it wasn't bitter in any way. In fact, it's quite the opposite. Whatever happened to me has actually taught me so much more and made me so much stronger that I can now sing about it and shout about it. And hey, I've got a hit out of it. <laughs> Republica had achieved back-to-back -back hits, and on the way, Saffron struck ruby gold with that iconic red hair. I just had a brilliant hairdresser, and he just went one day, Saff, do you fancy being dangerous? I went, well, what do you mean? He went, red. I went, what do you mean, red as a London bus? I went, all right. And within a few months, kids like literally running, screaming, up, like it became very overwhelming and I didn't understand it. All right, well done. Oh, no, nice Saffron, I had to say you're very popular in this studio. Oh, really? And there I was on TV, the girl with the red hair. But to me, it was like, yes, they've heard my song because they recognise me, that's great. Saffron looked like she came from the future. She put on her armour, and the armour was, I am going to be this super person, almost a superhero, with red hair, sharp cut, just attitude. I used to have a bottle, obviously, of red hair dry that used to freshen up. Yeah, I did turn quite a lot of motel and hotel rooms blood red. I think they thought there may have been a massacre. <laughs> We were in Nashville, Tennessee on tour and Wes Craven, the film director, phoned me and he, he was like, Hey, Saffron, I really like your new song, Drop Dead Gorgeous. I've written a new film called Scream. Your song's exactly the storyline. How many evil dead? Yeah. How many hell raised? Oh, right here. He asked my permission, could, could we use the song? Is that you, Randy? And I agreed because it is the storyline. My boyfriend Nigel does it in disguise. Yeah, yeah, but he's dropped dead gorgeous. Oh, you want to play psycho killer? And then, you know, we got to do the red carpet. And then suddenly, it was the biggest film in America. No one can ever foresee the life of Ready to Go and indeed Drop Dead Gorgeous and quite a few of our other songs. But in my head, songs are immortal. They're like stars. They've gone forever. Saffron was leading the charge for front women and stepping forward to join her Drop dead. was a familiar face. 